watch the movie Casino and all the cattle prod and the walls of the camp. So our next speaker is the more advanced manual. And before the last time, he's actually chosen the storytelling manual. And as Charles Lincoln aspires to be the token Tolkien for the modern age, we're doing project number one out of the storytelling manual about folk tales. And here, to give us the story of the boy who went forth to learn fear is Charles Lincoln. Thank you. So, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me thrice, I'll tell you a story of amaranthine delight that goes back a thousand years. So join me to so go back. The story is from the Grimm's Fairy Tales, a time a thousand years ago, presumably. There was a boy, and uh, he lived in a world much like ours. You had to pay your mortgage to your feet. You had to uh, deal with Vikings invading and other problems. So the, there's a, there's a, the story starts off as a, there's a boy who doesn't have fear. Yeah, he might be a sociopath. But he doesn't have fear at all. So he asks his father, I want to learn what fear is. So his father sets him up with a friar, tries to get him a good education. The friar teaches him how to ring a bell. And he rings the bell, and he does a pretty good job at it. So the friar sends him out one night. It's kind of spooky, right? Sends him, okay, it's midnight. Ring the bell. So the boy rings the bell, and the friar comes up dressed as a ghost. And he's, he's just staring at him. So this is a sort of an awkward situation. But the boy isn't afraid at all. And he's like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You get out of here. So <laughs> the ghost just stands there. And the boy ends up kicking him, which leads to my theory that he might be a sociopath. And he just falls <laughs> down. The ghost falls down. Turns out it's the friar. So that's kind of makes you wonder, right? The, anyway, so the, the father is kind of upset. He's kind of an embarrassment to the community. Father kicks him out of the house. So he, he's like, "You, you get out of here!" And uh, it's all spooky, right? But I just can't help laughing at these grim fairy tales because they're kind of silly. But so the boy's traveling from home. He's on the road. He sees a wagoner. You know, this guy's just holding a wagon. Probably some guy sitting in the back. Who knows? He said, "All right, all right, guy. All right, I'll teach you how to be scared. Go to these gallows where there's these these three people hanging right there. That's pretty scary." So the boy. And by the way, we don't know his name yet. He's he's just okay. All right, I'll go there. And he's he just he sleeps under the gallows. And, you know, kind of like that. And it's, it's very exciting. Okay. And then you know, in the, sometime in the middle of the night, one of them falls down. And he's like, oh, this is so annoying. Why would it? You know, this, and then uh, he just okay. I'll just put him back. So you know, I suppose if that happened to me, I'd be pretty scared. But again, this boy is probably some sort of. Anyway, psychologically <laughs> disturbed child. <laughs> so he, he continues on his route, and the wagoner says, okay, you know what? There's this, there's this haunted castle, Ooh, right? And you, know, you, you should go spend the night there and just uh, go see if you can blast out. Last year, last uh, three nights there. And if you do, the king has a sweet deal. It's sweepstakes. You last three nights there, you get a whole bunch of money, and you get to marry his daughter. And the boy says, okay. You know, the education didn't work out, but you can marry the rich girl and you, know, you become rich. So he goes there and he talks to the king, all right, I need three things. I need some fire because it's cold. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I need a lake, which is kind of like this little machine. I wasn't sure. It's kind of, kind of a sewing machine, but you can make things out of it. It's basically a tool. And I need uh, a, a knife for protection. So he goes there. And he spends the first night. Apparently nothing happens during there. He goes straight to night. So with the first night, and the boy is just sitting down next to his fire. And he's just trying to stay, you know, warm. Ooh. And uh, he hears some noises from this corner right here. And they're like, it's kind of cold. It's kind of cold. It's kind of cold. It's cold. And he's like, <laughs> and it goes on for apparently a couple hours. And the boy just gets kind of annoyed. Hey, guys, if it's so cold, why don't you come to the fire? I mean, gee whiz, right? As it turns out, it's two black cats. They just jump out at him. And the boy just says, okay, well, I guess you're warm now. And then they 
uh, what ensues is kind of a fight. It's literally bringing cats and dogs. You know, they come out, he offers them fire, but they're like, no, you need, you, you get out of here. And, uh, and so he says, all right, I'll take you all on. So as it's raining cats and dogs, uh, old boy is fighting them off from all angles, right? He, he puts his knife skills to work. Maybe it was a sword. Who knows? Maybe the Grimm's got it. The mistran- he got the translation wrong. But he takes them all out. And the good news is he now has some sustenance, so he can last out a couple more nights. Well, he just needs two more. All right, so skip to the next night, because nothing interesting happened in the castle during the daytime. And he's, he's over here, and uh, again, by his fire, which isn't in the chimney, but something falls out of the chimney, and it's half a man. So it's kind of gruesome, you know, it's, it's grim fairy tales. It wasn't Snow White this time. But, so she... <laughs> So half a man, we don't know if it's horizontal or vertical, but half a man falls out. And, I mean, I can, you know, I start sympathizing with this boy, you know, even if I were a sociopath, you know, it's kind of an annoying situation. It's like, he goes up to the chimney, hey guys, can you send the rest? I mean, you know, there's just, there's this half a guy here. I mean, it's kind of peculiar. <laughs> so this is kind of the worst part, you know, not suitable for work. You know, there's all these body parts, you know, like heads and bones fall out, and it's, it's never really explained why, but he uses his lathe. You know, smart little boy. He, he learned from a friar, and he, he sort of sets up a little bowling alley. And uh, so, you know, it kind of turns into Beetlejuice at that point. And so he's, he's just kind of, you know, he's, get, he's working on his, his uh, thing. So that night, you know, he survived night two. And remember, this is, this is like Shrek. You know, all these knights had tried to take on the dragon, and they, they couldn't survive. So he survived, you know, more than 90%. All right, so next night, <laughs> we just jump again. We skip the, what happens during the day. And what happens? And you're right. So there's a, there's, you hear some hustle and bustle, right? You know, they're, maybe they're foreclosing on the, on the castle because they didn't pay the rent because it doesn't sound like anybody has a job. <laughs> and, and so it, it turns out there's, there's you know, this is, this is like Hoffman. There's six guys, and he sees this body, and he's just like, Oh wow, this is rather peculiar. And, he, and he, he's a sociopath, right? So he's, he tries to strangle the guy. He's like, "Why don't you wake up? This is just peculiar. You shouldn't do that." Uh, as it turns out, the guy is dead. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, <laughs> this is really scary, right? I mean, imagine you're there, and there's just this, there's this, this weird dynamic. I mean, if I were there, you know, this is like a horror movie. I can't even watch. Like, Adam's family, so <laughs> the, he's kind of here. But Grimm's fairy tales is funny, right? And so he's he, he just these guys they they kind of are not being nice to him. He's like, okay, you, now, now he takes the reverse role. He's like, you get out of here, and they say, no, we're staying because we were here first. Uh, I mean, they like, kind of weren't right, and so he he fights them off, and he holds one up to uh, to the neck with the knife. He says, all right, you get out of here. I'm giving you one more chance, and the, and uh, the guy says, okay. I'll show you a bunch of treasure hidden in the basement, uh, and you, you'll be rich if you keep me alive. So the boy says, okay, I'll do that. So he gets the money. So he's rich, right? He survived three nights. That was the third night, and he has a lot of money. So what's the next part of the deal? You know, we thought the king would be giving him the money, but the king didn't give him the money that he got the money from surviving in the castle. Goes up to the king. He says, all right. I've done it. He says, okay, here's my daughter. It's just easy as that, right? It's just whoop. <laughs> and the, you, he, he, gets the, he gets his new wife, and he, all he does is complain throughout the marriage. They get married. <laughs> he's just like, I can't feel fear. You know, I want to I wanna shake. I want to shudder. And she says, and then she's just fed up with it. I mean, I'd be fed up with it from day one at the castle, right? And she one day she orders her servants, get a whole bunch of water from the river that's freezing, and throw it on him. And so he wakes up, I mean, he wakes up as the water's being thrown on him, and he's shaking. So finally, he learned how to shake, but he didn't know what fear was still. Yet he got his wish of willing to shudder and shake. So that's the story of who actually turns out to be Siegfried in uh, Richard Wagner's Daring des Nibelungen, which is a great opera. So this is kind of the backstory for another future story. Thank you. Talk about wonderfully entertaining.